Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. Or if you're on your around here, welcome to the channel. My name is Dallas, and today we are going to be going over the tactical screen in Grey Zone Warfare. Last video, we looked at the start of the game, how to set up your character, your settings, and we went over a little bit about the factions and what the factions do and what you really need to be careful about. So if it's your first time booting up Grey Zone, I recommend you click on the playlist link down in the description, go back, watch that video, then come back to this one. But for those of you that watched that one, or you already kind of know what you're doing, but you just want to learn a little bit more about the game, let's get straight into it. So first things first, the tax screen. What is it? This. When you're in the home base, it is a little bit different to when you're out in the field, but we will cover it in the home base because the only difference is, in the field, you will not have this vendor's task here. However, we're going to start from left to right, which means first things first, we are going to start with the map. Now, the map is, this is it. This is the world of Grey Zone. You have the big ground zero in the middle, and you have, as we said in the last video, I went with Mithras, we start at the south of the map here, this blue camp, and you've got at the top left and the top right the other two base camps for the other two factions in the game, as well as all your different POIs scattered across the map. Now, with this map, this is where you call in your helos to go to your departure points. This is where you call in a helo when you're out in the field to come back to the base. This is where you've got your ISR, you can view, you can see players, you can click on players, you can invite them to your squad, you can send them a message. And you can zoom in and out as well. Now, zoom in and out is fine. That is your mouse wheel. And if you want to move around when you are zoomed in, you hold down space, and then you click and drag. It is as simple as that. That is the basics of how to work the map. That is all there is to it, really, other than something that we will get onto. For those of you that have done any sort of navigation courses, you've been involved in, like, scouts, cadets, something like that, you will probably already know how to read a grid or a grid reference or a map position. For those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about when I say any of those words, I promise you it is not as complicated as it sounds. You see the white lines that are going up and down and side to side on the map and the left-hand side and at the bottom, they have numbers on them. Those numbers are how you read your grid square. At the utmost basic level here, it is broke down into a four-digit grid square. Two digits along the bottom, two digits up the side. So, for example, the base camp here where we are at is located in 1710. Why is it 1710? Well, because it is the number that the bottom left of the grid square where you're in that starts it. So, at the left-hand side, it is line number 17, and at the bottom of the square it is line number 10. So we are in the 1710 grid square. However, there is more nuance to it. As you zoom in, you will see at a certain point it starts breaking down the grid squares even further by an extra digit. So you go from a four-digit grid reference to a six-digit grid reference. All this is, in the most simple way to put it, as you zoom in on one of these individual squares, it will then further break that square down by a 10 by 10 grid. So you guys will see here, we are now at 170 by 100, which was 17 by 10. It's now broken a 10 grid squares going across and 10 grid squares going up. This just lets you put a more accurate position on where you want to go. I promise you guys, it's not that difficult. The more you do it, the more you get used to it, the easier it will come. But if you are looking for a grid square, remember the bottom left of the square is where you take that reference from. So, for example, this square over here that I'm going to put this waypoint down in, waypoint's in the middle of the square. So what I want to do is from this waypoint, come to the bottom left here, and then you have your, you go down, it is to 177, you go across, it is 105. Now, the game does make it a little bit easier for you. When you have got a mouse in the square, it will just tell you the grid coordinates around the cursor, but it is always helpful to be able to know how to read a map as well. You never know when you're going to need it. Trust me, I learned that one the hard way. But anyway, you can filter by just your camps, you can filter by just your LZs, 
You can have your overview or just your points of interest as you unlock them later on as you go down the line. Now, next up, we have got your character. This is your inventory. This is your equipment here. Your equipment is the stuff that you take on you into the field. You have your helmet, you have your headset, you have your plate carrier, and then you have obviously your primary, your sidearm, and your knife as well, as well as a tactical belt, a safe lock, and then the pockets that are just on your clothes. Now, depending on what bag you have as well, you will sometimes get a weapon slot in that bag. For example, the scorpion bag has it. Other bags that you find in the field, they might not necessarily have the weapon slot. So all this is, and I know it looks intimidating. I know, I know, I promise it's not. This big bit that just has everything crammed in it, that is just all the equipment you have available to you. Now, yes, it looks daunting. There's a lot of it and you don't have a lot of space at the bottom to add new stuff in. Now, here is where there's a little bit of a trick. You have still got access to the inside of all these bags and everything when they are in your locker. So what you can do is stack your stuff up inside the bags and free yourself up more locker room. It is a very, very good way to kind of look. Obviously at that point, yes, you do then need to remember what bag did I put it in? Is it this one? Is it this one? You can spend like a few minutes searching for stuff. But if you're worried about saving yourself locker room and you want to save yourself some locker room, that is the way to go about it. Now, the only thing of note here that you really need to know, your safe lock box, this box right here. This is the only thing that when you have stuff inside it, you will not lose when you die. These four squares here, Treat them as if they were your child, because that is the stuff that you will not lose. So if you have a task vital bit of equipment, a task vital thing that you need to bring back to base, make sure it's in the safe lock so that even if you do die, you've still got it on you. If it's too big to fit in the safe lock, well, uh, you're SOL on that one, I'm afraid. Sorry to say it, guys. But... Next up, we have got your health tab. I kind of talked about that a little bit in the last video. This one, it will break down in game. Like you have wounds or bruises or broken bones, that kind of thing. It will show up here and then you will see your blood and everything affected down below it as well. The more blood you lose, the blurrier your vision is going to be, the harder it's going to be to shoot, the harder it's going to be to see. The lower energy you have, the lower you're going to be able to sprint. The higher the weight you have, the less time you're going to be able to sprint. So everything does very much play into itself and you do need to keep account of what is going on with your character and what is going on with his body. Now moving on to the next screen, the vendors here, as I said before, we've got three vendors. We've got Handshake, we've got Gunny, and we've got Labrat. Handshake, he kind of specializes on the gear and the equipment you're going to take in terms of like your ballistic helmets, your goggles, your body armor, your plate carriers, your bags, your belts, that kind of thing. He kind of focuses a lot on that at level one. Gunny is where you're going to get all your gunsmithing parts, all your guns. You can buy more guns, you can buy more ammo. Or if you want to build out your own gun, you can buy the individual parts as well for that. And then Labrat. Labrat is where you're going to get all your meds. Now, Again, they do all have their own individual tasks that you can undertake and do. As you guys can see here, we go through them all. They all have different tasks. And that brings us on to the next tab and the final tab for the task screen, your tasks tab. This one you can access when you are on mission or downrange or when you're exploring the world of Le Mang. Now, we're going to go over here and we're going to take Gunny's task, which we will be doing in the next video. So make sure you check that out. We will accept that task. And then we will see here it has now went into our active task slot on the tasks tab. Now, with that being said, guys, that is a very quick, very rough overview of the task screen. It is the basics that you guys need to know. Take time, get to know your inventory, get to know what's in it, get to know what you like using, what you don't like using, what you think you're going to use more of. Because I promise you, the more you know about it, the more it's going to help you down the road. Make sure you come back to the next one, guys, if you do want to learn how to do all the first tasks, the basics, the very simple stuff, if you just want to get, you know, that little step up and when you're playing Grayzone.
But guys, I appreciate you. Again, I've been Dallas. If this has helped you at all, make sure to leave a like in the video. Make sure to comment down below. Check out the playlist in the description for the rest of the videos that we are going to be dropping around Grey Zone. I appreciate y'all. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.